What's up guys, how's it going? Mike the Tech here and welcome to the first in a tutorial series on Play Canvas. Play Canvas is an HTML5 and WebGL game engine uh, that works completely online. That means you can actually make your entire game from within the website on a Chromebook or any kind of computer that supports a web browser. So it's really, really useful, especially for teams that are going to be working on the same project. You don't have to send it back and forth. You can just log in and collaborate on that um, itself. Uh, you can also export uh, and put it on your own website, just like you'd expect from any other kind of engine that supports WebGL. So you don't have to host it on their platform. You can actually, it, you have full control um, on the monetization and the public publishing of your project. So um, there's quite a few really cool um, examples and games and situations that you can use Play Canvas in. And we're going to go over the basics of how to use the engine. Um, to make a game. So before we get started, I want to give a huge shout out to Todd M and Leslie Media. Thank you so much for uh, your support. If you want to support this channel, click on that join or thanks button below. Um, let's go ahead and move on to our actual project here. So this is the editor window. And oh, also before I start, I, I upgraded my webcam too. So let me know if the video quality is better. Um, this is kind of a new setup that I have, and I'm not sure if it's going to be better or worse than the old one. Uh, same resolution, different sensor. We'll see how it goes. Hopefully it looks pretty good. Um, but yeah, so here's your, your first project. The first thing you'll see when you open up Play Canvas, and you're given a scenes window. Your scenes act as, uh, basically scenes in your game, like levels in your game. You can have a main menu scene. You can have level one, level two, a credit scene, a you win or you lose scene, or you can make those pop up dynamically in the game, depending on how you're um, creating the game itself. Uh, you have a couple options here for um, how to reference builds. So for example, you can actually commit a build to like 1.0 and then work on it and then um, commit 2.0 and move between them freely if you need to reference certain branches or um, feature sets. Uh, you can publish to Play Canvas where they'll host your game or you can download a zip and put it on your own server. And then of course we have version control for those same branches above. Um, let's go ahead and go back to our scenes and choose our main scene. And um, we get an editor intro. I'm going to go ahead and skip that because um, basically you guys are going to already see this. You're going to see it on yours. You don't really need it. Um, I guess it's going to make me go through it regardless. But I'll go over all of these features and explain what it all is for you in just a second. All right. So on the left side is our toolbox over here. Oh, look at all those orange dots. <laughs> so on the toolbox up here is um, all of the different things we can use to move objects in their scene. So if I click on this, for example, I can choose the rotate tool and I'll be able to rotate the object. Um, if I use control Z, it undoes the action. Uh, if we go to scale, we can adjust the scale and size of objects in our scene, including the height. And then if I go to translate, then we can actually move it around. Uh, you'll notice that it is a smooth movement. So if you're trying to link things up, it's not as useful because you're going to have to get it really perfect. But we do have snap available. If we click on snap, then it snaps to the grid, allowing us to easily place objects without much kind of thought as to um, getting it just perfect. It's going to line up um, exactly how you need it to. So that's really useful. Um, we can also focus on an object. So for example, if we're looking away and we don't know where it is, if we click on focus, it moves to the object. So we know where it is. Um, next we have our hierarchy up here. Our hierarchy is all of the objects inside of our scene already. So, uh, this object is in our scene and we see it here. Um, you can actually click on the different planes to see which one's which, um, they're grouped so that you can see if I click on platforms, I can actually move all the platforms separately. Uh, we have our ball here, our camera, which we get a view of the camera here. So when we move our camera, it'll actually show what the game will look like in this corner up here. Um, we have lights, so we can adjust the lighting in our scene. And uh, we have two teleporters with logic attached. So let's go ahead and uh, look at our assets down here, and then I'll go into the inspector and describe how to actually edit these objects. 
Um, our assets folder down here is where all of the assets that aren't in our scene but are in our game project are stored. This goes for scripts, models, um, any, any kind of file, textures, materials, everything goes into this assets folder. And if we want to place objects into our scene from it, all we do is grab one of those objects, drag it in, and it loads into our scene and we can place it wherever we'd like. I'm going to delete that because I don't actually want it in the scene. Uh, now let's talk about game logic. Um, when we click on our ball, for example, we have our inspector window here that goes over all of the logic attached. Um, this is separated into components because this is object um, oriented programming or object based programming. So um, we have different components that tell um, the engine how this ball should react. The first is a, a collision shape. So this is the shape of our collision box. I can make it larger or smaller, and it will react as if that is the actual size of the object. Um, we're just making it the same size as the ball so that it rolls freely. We have a rigid body, which affects the physics, and it says um, how heavy the object is, how much friction affects it, um, and uh, how it bounces. Restitution is the bounciness of an object. So if we lower the restitution, it bounces less. If we raise it, it bounces more. Uh, we also have scripts attached, so we have a movement scripts and a teleport script, and these are in JavaScript. I'll open those in just a second, but before I do that, I want to show you the other types of components we can add. If we click on Add Component up here, we can add animations. Uh, audio listeners, which is where the player is hearing audio from. This is usually on the player object itself. Um, that's opposed to uh, the sounds which are spatial, which means as an object gets closer to the listener, it gets louder, and um, it's also spatial, so it knows whether it's closer to the left side or right side, so it sounds like it's full 360 audio. Um, we have UI elements like buttons. Um, we can add cameras to the scene if we want to switch between cameras. Um, we have lights we can add, particle systems, which are very useful. We'll be getting into those as well. A screen, which is what we call our UI canvas. Um, so when you place a screen in the game, you'll see that it shows up um, as a screen size indicator. And we can drag our text elements or buttons or user interface elements into that uh, screen. Uh, let's go ahead and remove that real quick because I added it to the wrong place. Where did I place it? I may have lost it. Let's see. It's added to the last object you touched, I believe. Oh, I added it as a canvas. Okay. So, I mean, I added it as a component. So we're going to remove this component. Normally, and we just click on this cogwheel and click delete. Normally, when you add um, a scene or a screen to your scene, you click on add entity up here and then you add the user interface 2D screen. And that's how we add an actual entity and it shows up in the hierarchy like it's supposed to. So going back to our components, <laughs> we have all of our uh, different options we can add here, including a sprite if we're making a 2D game. And then finally, we have our scripts. So um, we can add a script simply by typing a name, new script, and click on create script. This will create a new script down here. To attach it, we just click here again and click on New Script, and it is attached. To edit that script, we just click on the Edit button, and it will load an in-browser code editor to edit the code for this script. And we have our initialize function, which happens as soon as it's loaded, and our update function, which happens every frame uh, of the game. So let's go ahead and try this game out and see what the basic looks like. And then um, in the next video, we'll actually make some changes to this um, project and start learning how to make a game ourselves. So when we hit play, it loads up in its own browser window. And we can use the arrow keys to move. The goal is to get to that um, teleport pad so we can go really fast. Oh, and I fell. Uh, we can see it also um, resets if you fall off. So if I fall off here, it resets to the beginning. And then if I get to it, Oops. it sends me back to the first teleporter. So um, that's the current status of the game. 
but we'll be making a lot of changes to make this one more interesting and then branching off to create our own game after that. So that's about it. Let me know if you like this video and you want me to continue this series. And uh, let me know if you have any questions or comments in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe if you want to watch more. And have a good one. Peace. What? You've never heard of Stream Savers? And you thought PewDiePie was the only YouTuber to make a game? I made a game too, and it's called Stream Savers, and it's available for pre-order right now for $9.99. And that's a great price.